Afnam, everyone. I am Ani, and welcome to our yogic eating series where I teach you how to gain mental control over your eating through yoga. And this is the episode number 10 where I am um, teach you three simple exercises, quick, potent, and very efficient to eliminate overwhelm. Okay, so this exercise that can be done any time of the day and I think you're going to enjoy it. First of all, facts here. We need to constantly detox our body and our mind. Now we need to detox the body and mind to, to eliminate overwhelm. Why? First of all, body and mind are highly connected. We can't separate them. So we accumulate stress over time. We know that the body has a mechanism of elimination. The mind doesn't have this mechanism of elimination. So still, nowadays, we need to give the body a little hand because we are constantly exposed to toxins like through air, to water, chemicals, even products that we put in our body, our food with the pesticides, herbicides. So there are many, many, many sources of um, toxins that we are exposed to. And on a subtle level, we have many types of toxins as well. So they are subtle toxins, let's say. So it is about, for example, the pressure of time. Who here feels like running out of time all the time? Like, I don't have time for that, or I need to do that. So we are constantly on a rush. And we are also exposed to news. You know, internet today, it's, it's a huge thing, it's a major thing for everyone. So we are constantly exposed to news, um, others, energy, especially if you don't have a strong magnetic field, a strong aura that it's capable to hand our individual, it's our individual energy, so we get mixed up. Sometimes it's hard to know what is ours and what is others, you know, and then we assume whatever is outside, we, we embrace it as if it's ours. So we, everything gets mixed up. It's like it's a big mess. And also exposed to experience that we go through the day and memories from the subconscious mind. So there are many, many ways that we are polluting our mind and our body. Now, this is this detox of body and mind. It's not a one-time thing. It's something that we need to do constantly. And I always say to my students, like, let's through the kriyas, through the meditation and through other types of practice ways to bring flow back what is the flow things comes in things goes out coming in and going out so we need the flow we need to see the body as a big vessel where we want a free flow of energy because then we can thrive in life we can achieve so many things we can go for our dreams that big project that we are we're aiming for you know the beautiful relationship that we want and the good relationship with food and with the people that i'm talking about the communication is clear so we need this free vessel here that's why it's important on a regular basis detox body and mind they are highly connected and what happened if we don't if we don't detox the body and mind now, on a subtle level, that's when we get stressed. That's when we get reactive. So we are, we instead of acting, instead of choosing something, for example, with food, I choose to eat that. No, I react, meaning I'm not even think about what I'm doing many times. Or I do, but I don't have the power to stop. I don't have the power to choose because our mechanism is so overwhelmed that our ability to choose, it's gone. We miss the chance, okay? So we become overwhelmed, like that's, it's, it's a full cup of water. We can't feed things anymore and we can't think clear. So there are many ways that the over the overexposure of toxins, of subtle toxins can affect our body. So it's hard to have a positive perspective when we are finding ourselves in a really uncomfortable 
not just uncomfortable, but a place that we can't really see the perspective, we can't see ahead. And something interesting, it's hard to keep our words. It's hard to keep our integrity. How many of you here, and this happened to me like for many, many years, and it's still doing some levels, because something that I'm constantly working on. So how many of us have this experiencing of, I want to do that. You have that big, that big, beautiful vision for yourself, but you can't do it. You can't keep your words. Your integrity fails. And that comes with guilt, with shame, with blame, with self-judgment, and all those feelings that we all know about. So another thing that we, it happens is it's hard to communicate. And on when we want to create a new healthy eating habits, communication is key. Communication is key. So in my um, in my in my program, the Yoga Blueprint, we have a whole module just on communication because we need to learn how to express our needs for ourselves and for others because we are not individuals that live in a bubble. We we you know, are constantly relating to others, your family, your friends. We can't ask for help if we don't have a clear communication. And it's hard to understand and really listen to others. Be one, because the words that come from outside become distorted. So someone tells us something and we are not able to pick up the subtlety of the words because not everyone knows how to communicate. And to be honest, most of, most of people have problem with communication, but it only requires in a relationship one person to understand and have this communication. Hi, Maria. Good morning. It only requires one person in a relationship to have a, the ability to communicate, to have this, to have a peaceful, peaceful relationship. So why? Because when we know, when we understand others, um, what all, someone else is saying, we not only understand the words because we are able to notice when the words of someone else mean something because we can pick up on the energetic level, on the facial expression. But how can we do that if we're not present, if we are overwhelmed with our own stuff, if we are full of you know, all this crap inside us? So it's hard. We can't communicate. Communicate is a big thing that manifests in our life and it can make our life really, really difficult if we don't constantly detox the body and the mind. This exercise I'm going to teach you today help you with that. And then anxiety kicks in. We can feel trapped. We don't have, we can't regulate our mood and that's a whole perfect scenario to burn out. Right, so this is all some examples how it is important to eliminate on a regular basis overwhelm by detoxing body and mind. This is examples of how we we are affected. Okay, so let me know if you feel any of this, any of this is what I mentioned in terms of subtle overwhelm on a physical level. The body starts to struggle to keep its regular functions. So we can feel sick or will. We our elimination systems, the lymphatic system, the digestive systems are so overwhelmed that it starts to get clogged, let's say. And of course, these are it's all connected to, to the energetic uh, to the mind as well. Now the lymphatic system. It doesn't have a mechanism to move. The lymphatic system, let's say, is the sewage of the body. So we need to move the body in order to move this waste. If we don't move the body, it's the lymphatic system gets like stagnated. So this um, exercise will help to move the lymphatic system as well. So the body gets vulnerable and reflects on the hormonal imbalance and our quality of sleep. And again, the body. It's set up to a state where it can burn out, okay? So just want to mention how can you identify these, these signs of overwhelm on a subtle and also on a physical level. Now, 
this exercise, they are ongoing help to eliminate to our elimination systems, the physical and subtle. Now, and it is, they are potent, they are strong, and they are a quick way. So they are all, you can practice all of them for five minutes. So we're going to practice here for three minutes just because of the time. But you will notice that once you practice this exercise, I'm going to ask you, do it a little bit stronger, do it more potent, more quick, because it's quick, but we need to put energy there to really get things moving and like shake, shake things and eliminate this overwhelm. Now, in both of these exercises, there are two forces that we work with. And these two forces, they're, they're part of our body, which is prana and apana. Apana is the energy in the body that is responsible for elimination, not only the, the physical level, but also on a mental level as well. So, and we have, and the prana, it's the energy in the body that is responsible for nurturing, for bringing new things to make, to help us transform. So, in all this exercise, what happens is the prana energy, the nurturing energy, mix up with apana energy. And that's when this is the formula for the kundalini energy in the body to rise up and then we, it's when we experience sensation as bliss, extreme clarity of mind, and we feel happy, we feel good, we don't want to be anywhere else or be anyone else. So it is the formula for the Kundalini to rise up. What is the Kundalini energy? Is the energy life force that we all have. It's a concentrated, super potent energy that's concentrated at the bottom of the spine and it's dormant when it doesn't have the conditions to rise up. The path needs to be clear for this energy. So it travels up the spine. And it's it, it's all, in Kundalini Yoga, of course, it's a safe way to rise this energy. But the formula is mixing the elimination force, which is the prana, with the prana, which is the nurturing force. So, and then we have the conditions to experience this blissful moments in life um it's not about it includes but it's not about only eating the right foods eating the right food what is the right food i mean you know food that are more natural that it's easy to digest it's rich uh in nutrients it's not just about the food aspect not at all it's about clearing up the space in the body and in the mind. So it's about making sure that we eliminate what does not serve us anymore and we can't expect. This is something interesting here. We can't expect to create new habits and keep the old, the old ones at the same time. It's not possible to keep old habits and create new ones. Why? Because a, ha a habit, it's not... Created. A habit is transformed. So we need to transform. How we transform? By changing old habits and making space for the new ones. So we need this space to flow new things. So we use our creative energy to manifest and being able to really hold those habits because you can say, you can't say like I create a new habit today. This is not how it works. It's not something that happens overnight. But we need to build the conditions in the body to hold new habits. And without eliminating elimination um, exercise, it's not possible to do that, right? So it's a transformation. We transform the habits. And so it is this, what is this elimination? Is the digestive system, the lymphatic system, to make us more energized, to bring clarity, security space, making space, clean, clearing up room to think and act and not to react. If we're feeling that you were reacting over and over again, not with food, but also with the communication, with the relationships with your kids, with your partner, with your friends, 
or with people on the street, strangers around you, if you're reacting, this is a huge sign of overwhelm. And so practice these exercises that uh, we're going to start now. So the first one is a simple one. It's called the lion breath. So the lion breath is a type of breath where we stick the tongue out and we will powerfully inhale and exhale through the mouth. This is a great detox on a physical level, detoxing the toxins of the body, and but detoxing our emotions. So it's common sometimes that after lying on breath, we feel like a little bit um, emotional, like crying, for example, because we are detoxing, you know? So we're going to practice these for three minutes. And then we have a couple more exercises, but let's practice this one first. I'm gonna put the timer here. So how we practice this, you stick the tongue out, try to reach the tip of the tongue to your chin. So it's really, um, we, feel, we feel that at the bottom of our tongue, it's very stretched. The bottom and the root of the tongue is very stretched. And then you're gonna inhale and exhale as powerful as you can. I'm gonna do for a couple of minutes here, two minutes, so you have the experience. Okay, close your eyes and I want you to look at your third eye. So bring the eye gaze to this point here. Don't need to force it too much. Make your spine nice and straight. So the, the posture is important. You can sit or you can sit on your mat, on your chair, or you can even do it standing. So let's do it together for two minutes. Stick it out and let's start. Keep breathing, keep breathing with your tongue out, using all your lung capacity. So as deep as you can, as a powerful, as powerful as you can during this breath, this lion breath. Last 30 seconds. Let's do a little bit deeper and stronger this breath. And that's it. So you can place your tongue back inside your mouth. And notice how you feel. How does your head, your body feel? How is your mind behaving your perception? Now, you can feel that it sometimes you feel a little bit light dizzy or lightheaded. Any disease that's normal. As any exercise that detoxify ourselves, it is normal to feel a little bit dizzy or, you know, your head's kind of even spin sometimes, but it is, it's, it's normal. If, you, if it is too much for you, just do less intense or um, give a little bit of a break. And something that you can practice at any time of the day for three minutes, for five minutes, if you feel like, you know, when you're so overwhelmed that you just feel like you're going to explode, Perhaps the lion breath. Okay, what is the next 
the next exercise here. The next exercise is what we call the spinal flex. Now, the spinal flex, it's we're going to move our spine back and forth and we combine with the breath. So the spinal flex, it helps us to move stagnant energy. So not only, again, for the physical, but also for the mental aspects, it's a good detoxifier, especially if we include a strong breath. So it's a dynamic rhythm um, that it's not something is low, it's something dynamic and powerful. So once you practice this exercise, put energy, excuse me, put energy on it. You can sit cross-legged or you can sit on a chair. I will cross my leg here. <laughs> But you place your hands, if you're sitting on a chair, open up your knees. Place your hands on your, on your knees. And we're going to move back, oh, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. So we do that combined with the breath. So it's inhale forward, exhale backwards. And our head does not move that much because the aim here is to move especially the bottom of the spine. When you really go forward, you open up your chest and you back, you curl the spine. So the head stay above, stays above the hips. So inhale, powerful breath through the nose. You can close your mouth, look, close your eyes, look up and in towards your third eye, and let's do it together. Let's do it for three minutes here. Come in posture, open up your knees or sit cross-legged, place your hands on your knees. Your elbows are straight. Don't bend your elbows. And let's try. Inhale forward, exhale backward. Strong breath, strong movement. Inhale and exhale through the nose. And why are you breathing and why are you moving your body? Mentally chant, sat as you go forward and numb as you go backwards. Sat, numb, sat, numb. This helps you to also concentrate your mind, gives focus to the mind. Sat nam, sat nam. Doing very well. We have just a few more seconds to do. Try to do a little bit faster with a strong breath, using all your lung capacity for that. Thirty seconds. Do it a little bit faster. Inhale in the middle, hold the air in, 
Hold the posture, apply Mula Bandha, gonna squeeze navel sexual organs in rectum. Squeeze all the muscles of your body, look up and in. Give the posture, exhale. One more time, inhale. Hold the air, inhale a little bit, a little bit more if you can. And squeeze the bottom of your pelvic floor as if you want to stop the flow of urination. Squeeze all the muscles of the body. Exhale. Great. When you're ready, just take two seconds here. Again, observe. What is your experience? How does your body feel? How does is your mind behaving? And when you're ready, you open your eyes. So this is called the spinal flaps. We have one more um, exercise to do. And this exercise is one of my favorites. I do it sometimes in the morning um, or in the end of the day. So this is about shaking the body. And it's shaking the body in a way that it is very powerful. That's no right or wrong to shake the body. We want to start shaking everything, every limb, every finger, the head, the neck, the, the chest, the torso. So we shake, 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 intensely shake. And it's, it's actually a um, little bit tricky and hard to do at the beginning if you're not used to that. It's, it's like a, a skill that we build to shake. So what the animals do when, when they are, when they face a, some threat and they get into that state of stress arousal, they, they are ready to run. What happens when after the threat goes away and their shake, it's natural, it's instinctive for animals to shake the body. This is the animal's like mechanism, you know, I'm not sure all animals, but I know that a lot of them do that. Shaking the body is elimination of the stress. And we humans, we don't, we don't have this uh, automatic. We actually, that we have the mind that stands on the way with the fear of like feeling, you know, shame. There's a lot of things that stands on the way for us to literally cry out or to shake the body. So sometimes when we feel uh, very vulnerable, we start to shake our body. That's the body's natural ability to like shake a little bit of the overwhelm. So what we're going to do now is to give the body a little bit of a hand and inten intentionally shake, shake it. So let's move to this one. I'll ask you to stand up. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. So you stand up and close your eyes. Put a time here. We do it for three minutes. Three minutes of intense shaking the body. Let me just put the timer here because I lost my timer. Yeah. So close your eyes, stand up, and start just with your legs. Start shaking your legs with your feet on the ground. Start shaking the legs, shake, start gradual and building up in a way that you, it becomes very, very intense. Shake, shake, shake. You might look at me, it's like oh, she's not doing much, but actually I'm shaking a lot my legs. So shake, because the shake is especially internal. Shake. And now we start moving to your hips. Shake everything. Very intense. We want to put our, because it's a quick exercise, important, but we need to put energy here. Shake the hips and start to shake the torso now. Shake in any direction. It's not right or wrong here. Shake. And now move to your arms. Don't worry about your breath. Your breath will catch up naturally. Shake and move to your neck and your shoulders. Shake. 
and your hands. And now, with your entire body shaking very, very intensely, you start now to, you know, move your feet out of the ground a little bit and shake your fingers. Think about any part of your body that you feel like is not moving, moving it. Even the parts you feel like cannot move, find a way to shake everything. We are eliminating here. We have one minute to go. I know it's a bit tiring, but just one minute. So I want you to shake as much as you can. If you've never shaked that like that in your entire life. Shake the head, shake the neck, shake everything like it's no one has seen you. Twenty seconds. Shake a little bit more. Your hands, your joints, especially the joints, the hips, the knees, the elbows, the shoulders, your neck. And stop. Inhale. Exhale. Let your breath catch up here. Keep your eyes closed. And notice the sensations in your body. All your arms, all your legs are feeling. And do some light movements in the body just to Bring a little bit of softness. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. What is the right way to do this exercise? As you probably realize, it's quick and powerful. So because they are short exercise, we want to put all our energy um, and on it, all the energy. If we're working the shake, not so much, but for example, the spinal flex and the lion breath, where we work with the breath, we want to, the breath to be very powerful. So put our max. The shake, you don't worry about the breath. What is the wrong way? It should do it slow and yeah. And also, when we are too overwhelmed to think of doing it. For example, there's actually uh, what happens to, to Forrest. Forrest said, like, I'm just too emotional right now to do that. I just need to cry a little bit, and then I will try to do the exercise later. So in this case, do it. If you feel like you just need to some time, um, a little bit of time to settle down and, you know, in, okay, now I'm ready to feel ready for this. But don't do it slow. It's not. It's not the, the the idea here is not to like feel good during the exercise because sometimes you don't feel good. You know the shaking. It's very intense. If you shake for ten minutes, you're gonna sweat. So it's not the, the feel good during the exercise. It's the feel good after. So don't do it slow and enjoying the breath. Do it powerful, and then you enjoy the effects of your breath later on. And when you can practice this. You can practice exercise during a good good idea here, something that I do um, sometimes, and it does help me a lot. It's practice this during our breaks. So during the breaks, for example, there's something, a technique that I do, it's called Pomodoro. Pomodoro is when you work or studying, or so, when you're doing something intellectual, let's say, um, you need to use your intellect. So you do it for 25 minutes, and then you take five minutes break. And then you do for 25 minutes, you work or study, and then five minutes break. So this enhances the productivity and the creativity so much. And in these types of exercise, it's even better because 
of when you're shaking or move powerfully through the breath because then you have it's like you know when you work so much that you can think about a solution i'm guilty of this i confess like yesterday for example i i knew i had to take a break and i didn't so i was just but by the end of the day it was like okay i can't think anymore i really need to have a break so don't my my advice don't wait if you can have a break of five minutes and practice this um it's it's excellent it's going to help you so much in terms of productivity focus and creativity and yeah so well, another time you can do right after in the morning really good time or at the end of the day as well so you can practice anytime i'm just giving suggestions here um for you to i suggest what you can do right now choose one of the three choose one of these three lion breath spinal flex or the shaking the body and practice it for the next week every day for three minutes or for five minutes and choose a time to do that you know okay, i'm gonna practice every day in the morning so you are constant with it and you start to see um, the emotions that your body experiences throughout the week so many kriyas in kundalini yoga have the detox exercise and they are complete set a lot of kriyas you know kriyas of 20 minutes we have kriyas of half an hour or one hour or even longer but these ones here, they are single exercise that you can practice at any time. So choose one and write it down and put reminders, you know, because a lot of things that I hear um, my students say like, I, I keep forgetting it or I, I don't have, I don't have the time. Surely you have three minutes of your day to eliminate stress, right? Um, <laughs> you, must, you must have three minutes of, in your day. So. Put reminders, put in reminders in your bio, post-its. If you work from home, for example, like I do, I put post-its. Um, let's see if I can, I don't have any, because I changed it. My, I have plenty of post-its in my other office, but here I don't have any. Then I put post-its near my computer. So I remember, okay, it's time to shake the body. It's time to breathe. Uh, this is one thing that you can do with the reminder and do it from, now on so you don't have to experience that burnout don't wait you to feel like you're about to explode to do this exercise because it's a maintenance it's not a fix 